on three different parts, one being the, um, that drug testing would lower drug use, another is the constitutional argument, and the third, and the third were the different law statutes. So in saying that it would actually lower the drug, drug use, it, according to an article that says test, that was being tested for cocaine but never touched the stuff, it actually might not because there are quite a few, just for cocaine itself, there are quite a few things like amoxicillin, topical anesthetics, kidney disease, liver disease, and diabetes that would end up testing positive when in fact they're not. They've never touched it, they've never <coughs> even been in the same room as the stuff, and that could end up eliminating people from even the possibility of getting welfare when they need it. Um, for the constitutional argument, people do say that it is an unconstitutional search. Where the Fourth Amendment says that it's the right of the, of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. This says that you can't randomly walk up to someone and search them for no reason. However, if in an interview or something with a case worker for a welfare agency, they start noticing that you're d exhibiting signs of maybe withdrawal or certain signs of side effects of drugs, that would be a probable cause to ask for you to be drug tested because it means that there might be something in your system and they want to be sure of that. That would end up meaning that it is not an unwarranted search. There is warrant for why they want to search you. And finally, the law statutes, he claimed there were only there were only 13 states that had ended up even considering this one. In fact, in 2016, there were at least 15 that were considering or had passed laws, including Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Kansas, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Utah, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Some apply to everyone, everyone where others do have specific language that there is a reason to believe that someone is engaging. Others require a specific scoring process. Um, some people, like Florida, for example, was halted by a district judge and permanently stopped in December of 2013, saying it was violating constitutional protections against unreasonable searches. Tennessee's bill requires that they develop a plan of suspic suspic suspicion bias testing and report its recommendations to the legislature by January of 2014. The state began a testing program in July of 2014. As of May, March 2016, at least 17 states have proposed legislation requiring some form of drug, drug testing or screening for public as, assistance recipients per year. Um, in West Virginia, for example, their SB6, which was passed March 23rd of this year, creates a three-year pilot program to screen applicants for, just, for substance abuse programs. If a caseworker believes there is a program, a drug test will be ordered. If they, they do test positive, but they attend treatment and counseling and job skills programs, they can still be deemed, they can still qualify for benefits. Um, if they refuse the test or if they test, um, or test positive, the, um, they're ineligible for assistance. However, a child whose parents test positive can still receive benefits through a designated PE, payee. In conclusion, my, the speech that I refuted claimed that there weren't that many people and it brought up very few places that 
had law statutes in place, whereas there are multiple that have multiple guidelines in order to help protect people's constitutional rights. Thank you. Love it. Drugs, not this way. Randy, let me mention some of the things that are, are pretty good and clear about the speech, and then we'll talk about a couple things that are problematic. Uh, organizationally, it's pretty easy to follow. You outline the advocate's claims, and then when you develop your own arguments, you basically are labeling the structure that you're talking to and applying it to those arguments. Uh, that's fine. I think on the first point especially, you have a, a, a good counterclaim on this issue that suggests that there might be a problem with doing this. Uh, the difficulties that I see come primarily on the um, third point where there's this whole dispute. I, I'm not sure that there's any dispute here. In essence, your, your argument is, well, he said only 13. It's actually 15 and as many as 17 did that. Well, why is that? undermine his argument that it would be beneficial to do this. I'm not sure it does. And in fact, when you start describing the programs that the other states are considering, they seem to think that it's going to have some benefit also. So I'm not sure that it really takes a contrary position and answers that point, except in the most indirect way, suggesting that, oh, well, you got the number wrong. But, and you know, there are programs like this. There might be a better argument to make here that says we're in an experimental stage at this particular point. We don't have any results that tell us definitively what's going to happen. Fortunately, we will know in a few years because a lot of states have passed laws to do this sort of thing. And so you can, I think you make the argument that says the advocate's argument is premature because he doesn't have any data from any of the places that have done this that shows that it is effective. And he should have that data because we've got plenty of states where they have done this sort of thing. That might be a way to make that argument applicable. Otherwise, it's just a dispute over, well, you're wrong. It's not 13 states, it's 17 states. And I, I don't think that that gets you anything. I don't know why that's important. On the first argument, I think that you've got a, a claim here that needs to be ex explained a little bit more. Because your argument here is there is a problem with doing drug testing. That, that the advocate has ignored. And that problem is that people could have false positives for a whole variety of reasons, and the consequence of that would be that they would be denied services that they need to have, and perhaps even have you know, negative consequences to their families as a result. Um, I think that's the argument that the other side makes on this issue uh, that is pretty appropriate here. Let's face it. If, if you're taking some other medication, if you've eaten some kind of food that's going to result in a false positive, and false positives are typical sorts of things, and you're going to be denied you know, services uh, as a consequence of that, that seems to be wrong. It seems to be inappropriate that there, some harm occurs to a person because of that. Then the question becomes, is there a demonstration that anybody has stopped taking drugs because they were required to do a drug test and they stopped taking the drugs because they wanted these services, well, did the advocate provide any proof on that? That's where I think you need to have a little bit more conflict. You've got a counterclaim on this point, but you kind of go at the, it in a very indirect way. And one of the things that's problematic is you're paraphrasing what was said there instead of directly quoting. It's, it's always going to be clearer if you quote the, the, the source that you're looking at directly, because then we know what they've said as opposed to the way you've described it, which I'm not saying is inaccurate, but it's not as clear as it should be. And as a consequence, it, it's going to raise a little bit more doubt about that particular point. All right, so organizationally, it's fine. And then on the, on the middle issue concerning the constitutionality point, um, I think you've got a good argument. I think the way you want to phrase this argument is Requiring everybody to take a test is unconstitutional. Requiring them to take a test if there is reasonable uh, 
cause or suspicion would be perfectly legitimate, and that's the dividing point between my position and the advocate's position. I know I don't think that it's always constitutionally, you know, uh, pre uh, acceptable to do this. It's only acceptable to do this in specific conditions, and the advocate uh, doesn't recognize those limitations, and those limitations are important. I think that's the way to maybe phrase that argument there. Otherwise, we just get. You're, you're just refining it. Well, it's okay to do it in these particular situations. So, again, where's the conflict on that point? All right. Thank you very much, everybody.